Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we'll be continuing our work on the, com the various components of our template. So uh, last video we did fix the alignment of all the elements in the header. Also we updated this click hide or click show of the search input and we aligned them and we corrected the, uh, the, the spacement between the two uh, or the three components sorry and we pushed them to the far right of our template so in today's video we'll be actually skipping this login because it's pretty much the same as the template or the design and we'll be moving directly to the cart component or the shopping cart whatever you want to call it so our very first step is always to inspect our element and by looking into the element section or element tab of our inspector we do see that we do start with a div with an id underscore desktop underscore cart which is the wrapper of the element so as always let's consider ourselves beginners and we don't really know where to find things and how to do it so i will go to my template folder let's close this one and we have to first understand or find where this template is coming from so go to classic modules and from here we're expecting to be somewhere inside a directory called cart cart something or shopping cart so start by doing shopping cart we do have this folder or directory containing three tpl files so we have already three when we don't know which one that could be the one displayed on the top section of our page so this is the model so we are expecting to have a pop-in or a model or uh something that really pop out and display some information which is not the case in our uh position in this uh, section of the page and we have another two tpl file shopping cart and product cart line so this name is a, a way so it's like saying this is not the one because shopping cart product line it mean like it will be displayed somewhere with a product list or product line or something meaning that it's a big probability that this is our file that we are looking for and by doing control f here we do see that we do have that id selector displayed right there and just to be more sure let's go ahead and add it some dummy tags like lorem of five characters or something whatever so just to make sure that that's the correct file that we are manipulating. Refresh the page. And there we go. We have our lorem text displayed correctly. Now we can start um, updating and adapting to fit and to reach this kind of view with the icons and the zero, that kind of stuff. So clicking this tool to inspect and put it the cursor under or over this number here. And let's see what is it actually. So it's called product count. That is basically a span. So back to here, and this is our element. And just here, I have to pay attention that we have an if statement wrapping two different uh, behavioral, two different views. So here we have an if statement dollar cart, or it's an object, product count, meaning how much product that we have in our cart. If it's superior than zero, we will be displaying um, an anchor that is actually pointing to the URL cart. And else, if we don't have um, a product actually in our cart, we have simply to display that zero. So here, I'd like to um, mimic a bit of the things, just play around with that, and I will invert this rule and try to see what that will give me. So refreshing the page, and we do see that pretty much nothing happened here, but when, um, well, seems like something went wrong here. So if card count, which is not the case here, it's actually equal to double zero, double equal to zero, so it's a zero. This is why we did not get what we expected. Now, if I do refresh, I do see that this button transformed into uh, in anchor so now if i click on that it will direct me directly to the card but for now our cart is empty which is pretty normal so let's go ahead and back to the home page and revert this back all right now our mission is to basically update this span so uh, we need to find where this span has his own properties so again go back to our template let's collapse these folder that we don't get distracted classic 
go to underscore devs as always this is the only source of truth of our style in javascript and go to the css here and here i will use this amazing idea that fortunately start to do a good job with the pre-social development and i will find in folder options and paste that and immediately it does show me that we have a couple of results the very first one is keeping actually from the theme.css so let me just go ahead and click on it and let's say what is this so this is a child of let's scroll a bit to the top it's start of the header so we need to say the closest header which is block cars okay and it has a property of display now right so if i move back to my front page and i do inspect this and this span we do see that it does not have any property it does not have here display known as mentioned oops oh let me just fix that that we get okay so here it does not have a display known as it's mentioned here meaning that this is not the place we want to update the style for that element so meaning we need to go to product.css and it's pretty logic because here we are as we said previously we are dividing the logic of our styling so we have what we call domain a style by domain product newsletter main menu etc so this is our span i would like really to tag things with our select that we could understand that better when we do uh like a can uh, get back to this work after a while so it does have a font size of one rem a uh, color that is defining a variable and font width of 600 so what about changing your font size to um 10 rem and i'm doing this in the process just to make sure that i am manipulating the correct element styling so here just give a second that all get green now moving back control of five as always and we did not see anything so let's give it another control of five and nothing really happened here so let's inspect this and see what went wrong so product card count product card count um well something did not went well because simply let's see what is the parent of this uh, okay so the big parent of this is block cart modal okay and if you still remember when we talked about the various template for our shopping cart we did say that we have a model.tpl so if i open this tpl and i do Control f I do see that I also have here a cart product count span, but here it's a P, not a span. Meaning that this rule is only applied for the span that will be displayed inside the model. And another conclusion that we don't have a specific rule, specific style for this element. So it's natively displayed there without any customization. This is what we have to do. Okay, so let's give it a look again to the design. So it has a full border radius and a background red and a, and a and white text, sorry. So let's click right here. And first of all, I'll do background red, okay? Then I would like to add a, a color to white. And also I would get rid of these uh, brackets, if that are brackets. Um, okay, pretty cool. Now, I'd like to reduce also the font size to 0.5 rem. That's a lot. So what about um, 0.7 rem? Okay, that fit me well. Now, I'd like to add a height of 10 pixel and a width of 10 pixel and display inline block that will um, make it really shrink and take, um, let's say, uh, the height and the width, assign it to it. So what about doing a text align center and a border radius, as I said, it will be 100%. So we have a perfect circle here. And one more thing to do is to place it just right there at the bottom right corner of our icon card that we have to update in a minute. So let me update also the position. So here I'll be applying a position absolute. So I will do left zero. Okay. 
So it went really far from for the left, but uh, we'll be updating that in a second. And also I will do a bottom zero for now. Oops, sorry. Nice. Okay, so how to fix this left? Simply when you try to place uh, an absolute element its parent to, uh, relatively to its parent, the parent must be relative. So here I will add this new rule, new property, header, position, relative. There we go. So it does immediately update. But here we have to pay attention because this header could be used anywhere else and it's really dangerous to use it that way. So, so in my case, I do suggest to create a property that has an ID, desktop cart, or a header, or a, a block cart as a parent, then header, then your elements. That way, you won't really affect any other element that could have this uh, like generic class name header. All right. So let's go ahead now and save our rules here. So I would like to see where I could find um, this cart this ID cart inside this file. So it's not there. What about searching globally? Probably we could find an iteration. No, it's not there. So it's safe to create a new rule here. So let's go ahead and find the adequate place to place uh, our new rule. And what about scrolling all the way to the bottom of this file? And here I will start by doing hash desktop and Moving back, we need to create, as I said, the dot header rule, which has position relative. Okay, relative, nice. And finally, we have to add the rules for this count that it has that red color, which is not really a red, but for the testing purpose, I just, I just I wanna be, oops, what I say? I will speed up a bit things and I will adapt, adapt that red color all right but the best okay sorry i just have to do it directly but the best practice is to use variables as i said in the previous videos and these variables i actually located under the scss folder partial and variables so here we could pick for example this brand danger and simply copy paste it and replace the hard-coded red all right Pretty cool. All right, so now simply we have to control F5 our page and we do see that we have our color, but here we did forget to update that uh, curly braces. I'm not good with that uh, nomination. So go back to shopping cart here and simply remove these two ones, okay. And I would like to also uh, reduce a bit the padding, the margin, because it's clearly really huge comparing to the design. And I will push it a bit to the bottom, so at about minus 10 pixel. I really hate using minus value on CSS, but for some time, or some time, you are forced to do that, but no problem on that. So this is the quick, the quick update. Let's save that. So back to our product or uh, not product but actually um, the way I'm a bit lost here product.scss all right so what about placing that right here okay so here I did um, like note to that you are doing something that is probably wrong because here we are writing inside a product.scss the time that we are customizing um, an element that is in relation with another component, which is shopping cart. So let me just see if we do have a component called cart here. And this is it. So this is the cart. And the best practice is really to keep it domain uh, scoped, if that's correct to say. And I will be moving this desktop cart to the cart element. All right. Nice. Okay. Copy that just all the way to the bottom and place your role. Now you are in the good practice. Mercy. All right, refreshing the page and something went wrong here because what is the reason? Because um, possibly that card, the SSS is not called here. So let's see if it's required. Okay, so this is it, card.scss. 
but um, why it does not compile okay that, that was simply a cache so that is correct now and good now let's see where I can find that kind of icon so the very first thing I would like to do here is to inspect and see what is the font family used here so he's using material icon now I can go to uh, for example let's do material icon uh, list yeah and material.io hopefully it will be listing all the icons that I could use so here I quickly search for cart and I hope that I could find the correct icon elsewhere there is no problem on that I just want to show you how to update the cart um, well let's see if I can find buy no buy shop no shopping cart or whatever um, there is a basket okay let's suppose I'd like to use this one instead so clicking on that let's grab this span selector and I just want to show you that this is the case so here he's using an I selector but we could replace it with a span like this and there we go so even this is more beautiful so to update the cart we have to go back to um, shopping cart .tpl. where is it this one and go to um, this I here you can put this as a command or in a command and simply paste this new icon and you'll be good to go refreshing control of five as always and voila so pretty cool just have to get rid of that um, lower nonsense text all right so we could say that we are done for this quick fourth part of this video as always thank you for watching if you enjoyed this content please don't hesitate to leave a good comment to subscribe to this channel and to give it a thumb up because that's really important that youtube be generous with me and show my content to more people because i think i deserve to be more popular in this platform thank you for watching and see you in the next episode peace